In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to make all of these things. That includes a simple 50mm box, a pretty looking organizer box, and this big sturdy carrying box with dividers, handles, and the flat pattern. And a process for making flat patterns in general. Let's start with a simple 50mm box. Like all good things, this will start with a sketch. Select the top plane and press Shift S to start a sketch. Tap R and drag out from the origin to create a center point rectangle. Then type 50 enter, 50 enter to set both sides to 50 millimeters. Press Shift E to extrude. Enter 50 millimeters for the extrusion depth. Tap enter an extra time to accept the feature. Activate the thicken tool and select two opposite faces at a time. Set the thickness to 3 millimeters, or plywood thickness, tap the arrow to reverse the direction, and switch the thicken to new mode. Now tap Shift enter to repeat the thicken command. Now repeat the process. The reason why we are flipping the thicken direction inward is that the panels intersect so that the laser joint feature works properly. The reason for selecting new is to make new panels rather than adding to the existing skeleton cube. Press shift enter to repeat the process one last time, but only select the bottom. Now we have completed the foundation for using the laser joint feature that being multiple intersecting panels of a uniform thickness. Use the delete part feature to delete the skeleton cube and clean up the part studio in preparation for using the laser joint feature. To summon the laser joint feature, tap Alt C, type laser joint and tap enter. Switch to the automatic tab and left click drag in the graphics area to box select everything. Set the number of pins to 12 to target making as many pins as possible and switch on adaptive pin sizing. 10 and 50 millimeters are good minimum and maximum pin widths. Check add allowance and set it to your curve width but negative and check the first apply checkbox. Check corner overcut and set the diameter to your end mill's diameter if you're using a CNC router or CNC mill. It'll automatically add overcuts to the corners so that the parts are manufacturable. You can also optionally activate the pin chamfer slash fillet tool to make the parts easier to assemble. If you're using a laser cutter, feel free to disable the corner overcut. Check that your numbers and checkboxes match those on the screen. The numbers are remembered in future times you activate the feature, but you'll need to check adaptive pin sizing each time. But how do I make it look pretty and laser cut, you ask? I'll show you in the next section with a cool organizational box. We'll now create this organizer bin. Start a new sketch on the right plane. Tap N on your keyboard to face the sketch plane and select L to start the line tool. As you tap the left mouse button to add points to the polyline, you can type numbers directly to add dimensions to the lengths of the lines. Make sure the dimensions for your sketch match those on the screen. Enter the dimension tool by pressing D. Click the slanted line and click the horizontal bottom line and type 30 to add a 30 degree dimension. Make sure what's on screen matches your sketch, then press Shift E to extrude and switch from blind to symmetric mode. Set the depth to 50 millimeters. Now use the thicken tool like in the first example to create all of the panels that will be laser cut. Remember to avoid selecting adjacent faces to prevent unexpected results. If you do select two adjacent faces, it will form an L shape and the laser joint feature will not work. Using this strategy, you can transform just about any shape or object into laser cut panels as long as the faces are flat. Also, feel free to use any thickness you want for the panels, it doesn't have to be 3mm. Use the delete part feature to remove the skeleton body and activate the laser joint feature. Enable adaptive pin sizing and box select everything in the graphics area. Box selecting to the left will include anything that's even slightly within the box while box selecting to the right will only include things that are completely within. Activate the fillet command and select the top two edges to smooth them out a bit. I found a radius of 20 mm looks good. Select part 1, hold shift and select part 5, select all of them. Right click and assign a material. I set it to Douglas fir. Control enter accepts the material dialog. Right click and add the dark brown appearance to everything. That's the color for the laser cut edge. Now select all of the large faces. Once you have them all selected, set them to a light brown color. This isn't necessary for laser cutting, but it makes the model look much nicer. But wait, how do I make the DXF for fabrication, you ask? We'll get to that in just a minute or two. To show off your model, you can click the three bars at the top left, select print, reposition the model to be within the border, and press download image. This will render a very high resolution image that you can share around or print. Next, we'll make a durable box with handles along with DXFs. Now, let's make this sturdier box with handles as well as a fabrication layout. Fortunately, like with the previous two designs, most of the tedious work will be automated. Start with the sketch on the top plane and make a 300mm by 150mm rectangle. To make this design more practical, it's more scaled up than the previous two. Extrude the sketch 100mm. For the thickening commands, instead of 3mm, use 6mm. This is about equivalent to quarter inch plywood. Also, just because I've been doing everything in metric doesn't mean you have to. To switch an on shape document's units, go to the three bars at the top left, like we did with print, and select workspace units. You can use any units you wish for any length in on shape by typing MM or IN or another unit abbreviation, but if you don't include units, then it'll just use the workspace units by default. Use the transform feature, selecting move by XYZ as the type, and set the Z distance to be one plate thickness, in this case six millimeters. Start a new sketch on the right plane 
plane. Draw a center point rectangle starting directly above the origin. This will be one of the dividers to help with organization and structural rigidity. Add pierce constraints between the rectangle's points and model's lines as shown on screen. The pierce constraint pins a point that's in a sketch to a curve or line that intersects the sketch. Extrude the sketch to a 6mm thickness and switch the type to symmetric. You can start to see the model come together now. Create a new linear part pattern. Select the panel we just created, and for the direction select the right plane. The pattern distance should be 75mm and centered should be checked. Now activate a move face feature. Select the tops of the two side panels and set the distance to 50mm. These will be the handles. Start the fillet tool and select the four topmost short edges. These can be a bit tricky to select, so zooming in might be a good idea. The radius for these will be 25mm. We're almost done with the manual modeling portion. After this, start a sketch on the right side of the right handle panel. The shortcut for orienting normal to the sketch is N, and W activates the window zoom tool. Draw a line snapping to the center points of the two fillets. Activate the slot tool and click on the line that you just created. Set the size to 25mm across. Then activate the extrude tool. Switch it to remove mode and add the other handle panel to the merge scope. For the end condition, select through all. That's all of the mangle modeling for this box. Now activate the laser joint feature again, switch it to automatic mode, and enable adaptive pin size. Box select all of the panels and watch how it automatically adds all of the pins and holes necessary to make all of the panels interlock. It's a lot more fun to do it this way than by hand, I think. Speaking of things that aren't fun to do manually, the nesting's also automatic. Activate the auto layout feature script. Make sure the thickness of material matches that of your panels. This value is remembered the next time you use the feature. That's why mine was already 6mm. As for how the panels are laid out, this is controlled by the cut sheet width and cut sheet height. Set these to the physical dimensions of the material you have on hand. Check show cut sheet sketches to visualize how the panels will be laid out on the material. It's good to leave this unchecked when you finish the feature. Finally, we'll make the DXF. Select the plus in the bottom left corner and create a new drawing. Choose custom template, ISO standard, and A0 sheet size. If your layout doesn't fit on an A0 sheet, that's fine because the DXF includes geometry which is off the sheet. Disable the border and title block. These will make your laser cutter do a bit of a dance and cut out a lot of material that it's not supposed to. In the insert dialog, switch to the part studio tab and select the one with the laid out panels. Set the view orientation to top and the scale as 1 to 1. Drop the layout wherever you'd like, it's not too important because the DXF does not include the edge of the sheet. Right click on your drawings tab at the bottom and select the export option. You can rename the export to make it a bit easier to find, but it's not strictly necessary. In the format is set to DXF. Under Options, select Download to immediately save it to your computer. The cloud options might make it easier to transfer the file to your fabrication computer. Once the DXF is downloaded, you're ready to go and cut out your panels. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feedback, or video ideas, please leave them in the comments. Please consider subscribing if you'd like more content like this. And if you know someone who might find this video helpful or interesting, please share it with them. Thanks again for watching.